hooked up for a test run to see if it's going to power up and uh, how much uh, watts it's going to use. So you can see with it turned off, it's actually pulling one watt, which uh, is okay. I would ideally you'd like to see that at zero for something being turned off, but um, I'm just going to hit the motherboard header for the power button. And since there's no fans, it's actually really hard to tell when this thing's on, but you can see the uh, watts jumping up. It's worth about 19 watts. And uh, here we are. So it's, a, it's at 15, 15 or 16 watts right now, and this is not even um, inside an operating system which supports uh, low power options so I'm pretty happy seeing that on a first boot uh, 15 or 16 watts um, by disabling some of the devices on board that I'm not going to use I can get that down um, I'm sensing very little heat off of this heat sink so I'm uh, pretty excited so far so um, I did do a test and uh, put this little guy in uh, this is a, a SSD that's made for a mini PCI Express slot. However, it seems that the motherboard does not have the capability to use that port as a hard drive, unfortunately. So, um, back to the drawing board on this. I'll probably have to take apart a normal 2.5 inch SSD and see what I have inside and see if I can find something that can fit on here without taking up a lot of real estate. So, 15, 16 watts, pretty good so far. So, Thanks for watching. Okay, so we're going to get started uh, taking this apart. Um, first thing I'm going to take apart is this front black piece, a little clasp. Two screws right here. It's always good to put your screws in kind of a mapping system so you know where they are, if they're missing, and most importantly how to put it back together. So that's now loose. There's now about, I think there's six screws. For those of you who are used to opening up Xboxes, <laughs> kind of funny to see the six screws, three on top, three on bottom arrangement. It's, uh, it always kind of reminds me of the Xbox, if you've ever taken one of those apart. So, once again, be careful. These screws have been in these this plastic for who knows how many years, so just be gentle with it. You don't want to uh, pull too hard or too quick and snap the plastic at all. screws out. And once you've done that, <clears throat> the top pops right off. It's a pretty basic design, but very effective, I think. So you got that top off, and here you've got your <clears throat> inside of your NES. So um, let's continue. So once the top's off, the first thing I'm going to do is remove all of the screws on this top plate. See if I can get that to come out. I can't remember the exact order that you do this in, but uh, I'm sure it will come pretty easy. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. I'd just like to mention that this particular NES is a non-functioning unit. It'd be a shame to see one of these things working in good condition to not be able to live out its days playing as it was originally intended, so 
don't think I killed a perfectly good system to do this. The, ni the other nice thing about uh, the Nintendo system is the majority of the screws, the six screws I took off the back, and these screws on the the shield here, they're all the same size, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, about knowing what goes where. There's two more on the back here. Turn that so we can take a look. Here's the front controller connector piece I took off earlier. Now that heat shield comes right off, and now we have to deal with uh, a few more little things. So if you look in here, you've got a screw here, holding that down, a screw there, and uh, and a few screws holding this cartridge holder down. So we'll remove those and see what happens. screws removed lifts right out I have controller connectors that are going in here and here and power button connectors right here so I'm just gonna pull that off it uh, slides out quite easy And now we're done with this portion, the uh, original NES innards. So we'll get rid of that. And now we just have <clears throat> the base unit. We'll be reusing these connectors to hook into our retro USBs. And obviously we want to keep the power and the reset button. We'll pretty common buttons on a normal computer and we'll take advantage of that. Um, so that's the basic teardown.